Apple CarPlay came a long way from the very beginning to now, as now we have a bunch of cool customization options, as well as some nifty hidden features all integrated on our infotainment system. And then in today's day and age, Apple CarPlay is now a necessity in terms of when purchasing or buying a new car. It's basically the deal breaker. More users are really making this into the main requirement on any new vehicle purchase. So if your vehicle does have Apple CarPlay, here's some awesome tips and tricks and some cool hidden feature that you didn't know that will get you up to speed if you're new to the whole Apple CarPlay experience. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start off this list with the most important settings to be aware of. So new for iOS 15 was the do not disturb functions. We have different categories and such, one of which the biggest one obviously is driving for Apple CarPlay. So here on our dashboard, this is basically where you find the media selection, your maps, and your recently opened apps right here. If we actually scroll into our settings right here, here are the new settings that Apple gave us. So driving focus is the biggest one. You can manually enable it right here on the settings, enable it right here, as you see, and this also gives us additional features. But before we go into these features, I wanna go ahead and show you the ability to have this enabled automatically. So on your main device on your iPhone, if you actually launch the focus or control center and go into the focus section, I should say, tap on driving, click the little three dot icon right here, this will give us a quick access to the settings. In here, you can also enable it here as well, but if you go into this section where it says turn on automatically, there's different modes you can enable. You can leave it on automatically, which I believe it uses GPS and based off the speed and motion and other sensors that the iPhones have, it'll detect CarPlay that you're in a vehicle, so try to connect to it. You can leave it manual, but my personal favorite is just to have it automatic. This, as soon as the iPhone detects it, there's an R CarPlay present, it's gonna immediately turn it on. So this one is the best one in my opinion, if you just want the best automatic transition. And then here still, you can actually allow people to still get a hold of you if needed. So here you can actually personalize, add some certain people in your contacts, or you can also allow it to be categorized off your favorites, no one, everyone, or contacts. And notice down here where it says allow repeated calls, when this is enabled, if somebody's getting, calling you multiple times after CarPlay hangs up on them, it will actually bypass this and they will actually get a hold of you. Then here in the option section, you can actually allow it to actually will share that information. So if someone's trying to message you, they'll be notified right here that you have your notifications on silent or do not disturb is enabled. So that's basically what Drive Focus allows you to do. Now for messages, down here was the little red bell icon. If you go on the announce messages and enable this, Siri will automatically verbally read out loud any new incoming message you receive. And if you notice, there's also announce options where you can actually go in and personalize it and customize it even more. So here you see three different sections to check mark. So you get check mark it so it only announce new messages or silent new messages or remember previous settings. I like to leave this on previous settings to be honest. But down here is where you can actually turn this on entirely. So now you see the bell, bell icon in the stats bar right here. So now from now on, all of our new messages will automatically be announced thanks to Siri. Now for to customize your wallpaper, you are limited with the wallpaper supply. But if you like to look at them and see what you have in terms of having options, uh, go into settings, click on wallpapers. Here is all of these different wallpapers you have to choose from. It shows you a little preview between day and night mode, so you can actually switch between them. That, that's if, if you have it on automatic, but if you like to set it on dedicated dark mode, you could also do so. You could do this, you can find this in the appearance section, and here is where you can select either automatic or always dark. No always light mode, unfortunately, but select the ones you like to use. And if you have it on always dark, you could actually allow the maps to always stay dark too. So you know how some map apps, actually all map apps nowadays, switch between dark mode or light mode, depending on the day and such. If you want to overwrite this and always leave it on dark mode to match the dark mode theme you have going on, enable it right here. Other customization abilities that we have is we can actually include album artwork. So by having this enabled, this also supports third-party music streaming apps too, like Spotify. The album artwork will actually show right here. But if you don't always want to see the artwork, you can always just go in here, disable it. And now when you go back, 
you notice that the artwork is kind of blurry in the background. It's, it's still there, but it's really blurry. It's hard to detect and tell what it is unless you are looking for it, that artwork. But that's what that does. Now, let's say you want to customize these apps even more. Because unlike our iPhones, if you press and hold on one of these icons, it doesn't allow us the ability to actually edit and rearrange our apps. But you can do so. The way to do this is to actually go on your main device on your iPhone, go into settings, and on top, just type in CarPlay. It's easier if you do it this way. You'll see it right here, general CarPlay. And here under the My Car section, try to look for the vehicle that you're trying to look for that you actually use the most and you want to customize. So we have a BMW, a Ford Raptor, Sync 3. Unfortunately, you're unable to rename these. That's the only con. So you actually have to go in here and mess around until you find the correct one. If you have three vehicles with the same interface, like the Sync 3, from my knowledge, this one, Ford just put Sync 3 up across all of them. But when you select one, go to customize. Here's all the apps that you can actually include or take out if you don't want to see that in the interface. Just simply tap the minus icon and you can remove it like so. If you like to rearrange it, just tap the little lines on the side or over here. You can move them up, down, and reorganize it like so. And of course, you can always hit reset if you want to reset everything. But again, you can remove the ones you don't like and add them again once more like this. So if you're curious how you clean up and rearrange your interface, this is how you do that. Now this vehicle actually gives us the ability to enable this toggle right here that says allow CarPlay while locked. When this is enabled, this will basically allow CarPlay to connect to the vehicle even without Face ID. But when you go ahead and disable this, now whenever you get into that car, by default, Apple CarPlay is going to be turned off unless you unlock your device and then it will connect to the car. You typically want to enable this, let's say for example you and your spouse always get in the car at the same time and you happen to have a wireless CarPlay device or you plug in your device onto the vehicle. Instead of it being your wife's primary phone or your primary phone, whoever unlocks their phone first, that will typically be the device your car will use for CarPlay if that makes sense. And then if you got rid of that car, you can always just tap forget this car to clear up that space. Now some cars typically have this and some don't like this one. This one just gives us the ability to turn CarPlay on and off. If you don't want to use it at all, you can just turn it off completely. And then this BMW actually has this enhanced integration, which if you read the description, just allows the apps to be shareable on your iPhone. But it also says that it'll still work without this. So I guess this will just enhance the multitasking experience. But that's really the only three there is available that you should really be concerned about. Now, depending on the vehicle, some cars actually do have the Hey SIRI, don't want to set up your device feature, where when you're driving, you can verbally just say the Hey, that command, and Siri will actually begin listening. Now, in case your vehicle doesn't have this, you can always just look for the speaker icon like this on the steering wheel, like in this vehicle. You can press on here, this will automatically launch you virtual voice assistant aka siri and will help guide you or answer any questions you may have regarding about the weather or set navigation or directions to a new location you could easily do so now pro tip my vehicle doesn't have the hey siri feature but i notice if my phone is close enough to me siri could verbally just hear it if i have it enabled on my smartphone so you could work uh, work around it this way as well and if you'd like to know how to enable this on your smartphone, it's simple. Just go back into settings and scroll down to where you see Siri and search. Enable, listen for Hey SIRI, you know. Enable it here and also enable it when the lock screen is on so Siri could still pop up. So when replying to text messages, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could verbally ask Siri to actually reply or read your previous messages or you can actually click on the message app right here. Now, by default, you could actually reply with dictation. From my personal experience, it's not really always accurate. Sometimes it will replace a word with a swear word. So to save yourself the embarrassment, you could also just send a voice message. And if you'd like to know how to do this, it's very simple. The command you could actually just use is launch Siri. You could either manually hold this little corner right here. This will also launch the virtual voice assistant. And you could just say, send a voice message to Mark. And then Siri will actually begin recording. And you can say whatever you like to say on the message and it'll send it. 
This way it'll bypass the dictation Texas speech thing. Now another cool tip about Apple CarPlay nowadays is now you actually have the ability to multitask while using CarPlay. Previously, if CarPlay is enabled, your phone is basically unusable. But now you can actually continue using your map navigation and you still have the ability to actually go on your phone and switch to different tracks, songs, switch between different music streaming platforms and such. So your passenger typically still operate your phone even while using CarPlay. Now the dashboard of Apple CarPlay is extremely interesting. If you have Siri suggestions, Siri could actually automatically suggest the route you're going towards. So if you want to go, so if you're at a location and Siri recognizes it as a spot like a gym or a restaurant or something that you typically go to and afterwards you just head home, Siri will automatically suggest a route that you could just tap continue and it will show you all the information including traffic reports and such in case there's a, there's a traffic holdup it'll actually suggest you a faster route instead of you finding out the hard way. Another thing about having Siri suggest and enable is it will also notify you if you have an upcoming event. So as soon as you get in your vehicle, it will actually show you the calendar and if you include the location, it will actually suggest you the route as well. So that's what this does with the Siri suggestion, which you can find in the settings right here. Now, the map icon has a couple of interesting features now. If you drive an electric vehicle, you can literally just type EV chargers and Siri will suggest the nearest charging stations nearby. In addition to that, you're always able to share your ETA. So in case you're meeting up with a friend or a family member, you can always just tap share ETA right here, tap the contact information, and they'll just get your ETA arrival this way. So you can meet up at the same time. And then for a final example, if you're looking for an app, you can always verbally request Siri to open up something like say Siri open up calendars now if you're looking for a satellite view method of course you can always download Google Maps Google Maps actually will give you a satellite view feature whenever you're using their navigation system as well as you could use ways to have a community that will spot cops and such so you're not stuck with just Apple and fun fact you can actually run all of them at once it's gonna make everything confusing and such now, a pro tip when using navigation, especially with the voice enabled, as soon as the voice begins talking, if you rotate the volume knob, you can actually adjust the voice this way as well. Different from the audio, the music source audio that you're listening to. So as soon as Siri or whoever, whatever voice navigation you're using, as soon as it starts talking, just adjust the volume knob and that's how you can actually adjust the audio. Now, if you like your iPhone to constantly mark the park location of your vehicle, so as soon as you turn off Apple CarPlay, your iPhone can mark that park location. So if you have a hard time backtracking or finding your car in the parking lot, you can always just launch the map app and see where you parked right here. To enable this settings, simply just on your iPhone, go into settings, go into the map section, scroll down where it says show park location. Make sure this is enabled. And there you go, that's how you set that up. Now if you're wondering how you can take a screenshot, just take a screenshot on your main device on the iPhone by taking the screenshot, by hitting the screenshot button, it'll take a screenshot of not just your iPhone, but also the CarPlay screen. And then if you wear an Apple Watch, you may have noticed when you use Apple CarPlay navigation, it'll actually send an app haptic feedback to your wrist. Every time when you're getting, approaching a turn or getting closer to a turn, if you'd like to disable this in case this becomes a nuisance because now you're having multiple different sources of notifications for the same thing, you could easily do so by going into the Apple Watch app on your iPhone, scroll all the way down to the Apple Watch settings right here in Maps, and then just disable it so it doesn't do that with Apple CarPlay. And then you have the other options here as well if you like to disable this for cycling or just using Maps in general. And there you guys have it. Hope you got some good useful information out of this video and learned something new. If you did, you know what to do. I really appreciate it if you actually leave this video a like, as those will help me out a lot here on YouTube and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. If you'd like to catch me live, I do stream now on the weekends. Here you can actually get a hold of me, interact with me, ask me all, some, all kinds of questions while having a good time with the community. So make sure you follow me on Twitch, which I'll have linked in the video description down below. Now, if you like to see other videos I have covered in the past check out this video over here as I go through some amazing third-party applications you can download that support Apple CarPlay you can check out that video right over there and then that video next to that one that is a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you thank you so much for watching take care and I'll catch you all
in the next one. See ya.